I am very excited to be speaking with Representative Davis of Illinois' 13th Congressional District. Representative Davis serves on the House Committee on Agriculture, the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, and is the ranking member on the Committee on House Administration. Welcome, Representative Davis. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Well, thanks for having me on, Amanda. All right, I'll get into my first question. So. The Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in computer science and STEM. Why do you think students should participate in the Congressional App Challenge? Well, number one, I wish I would have had the opportunity to have a program like this, but when we're talking about coding and apps, they didn't exist when I was in high school and even when I was in middle school too. Uh, this is a great opportunity to give kids a chance to really test what they can do and compare it to other students throughout at least a congressional district. Uh, we've been participating ever since we first heard about this program. And I've had schools that have participated every year. Some schools have won more than others, but it's those individual stories that really make up what I think is the heart of this program. And I certainly hope every member of Congress takes advantage of the App Challenge program. And along those lines, how do you encourage students within your district to participate in the challenge? Well, a lot of times I don't know they are interested. So first off, we make sure that we publicize the competition and we get that, that, that competition and the rules and the regulations, we get them to the school districts so that those administrators and the teachers can ask the students if they're interested in competing against all of the other schools in my congressional district. Now, we have students of all coding abilities participating in the challenge. Do you have any advice for students who are interested in taking part in the challenge? You know, the best thing I can say is don't underestimate your abilities based upon the size of school you may attend, based upon your experience, because the professionals that actually make the determinations of who wins in my district they're professionals in, in the industry. And I've been shocked by many students who thought when they signed up, there is no way I'm going to place, let alone win. And they're surprised and it gives them confidence, I think, to be able to move to the next level. And I've got great stories and, uh, of folks that I've seen move on from high school and into this type of, of activity and type of profession for their career. That's great advice. Now, as you mentioned, you have been performing the app challenge in your district since 2015. What would you say is your favorite memory of interacting with the students who take part in the challenge? Well, there's there's a lot of different uh, a lot of different memories I have because I go to the school and and surprise all of my first, second, and third place winners. And, and I will oh. tell you that one of the most one of the most memorable ones I've had was at my high school. Uh, Taylorville High School. It's a town of about 12,000 people in central Illinois, uh, a rural community that's not really known for, for coding or even we're, we're moving ahead and, and building up our STEM programs because of great leadership in our school district. But I went to go see a young man because he got second place in my app challenge. And I'd never met this young man, but subsequently found out that I went to school with his dad and his mom. And I was able to talk to him about what his next steps were when he was going to, to graduate from high school a year and a half later. And he said he wanted to join the Air Force so they could help pay for school. I said, did you ever think about applying for the Air Force Academy or for any other military academy? Because they're looking for prospective students and prospective cadets with your talent. And lo and behold, he went home that night, according to to his mom and dad and began researching the Air Force Academy. And I was proud to give him a nomination a year later to join the Air Force Academy. And the Academy accepted that nomination. And this young man now, because of the app challenge, has pursued a career as a member of the Air Force Academy. And one day will be part of securing our nation as a member of the Air Force. That's a great story. Now, why do you think early intervention in STEM and computer science is so important? Well, it's, it's, it's not just STEM and science. 
uh, we've got to do a better job of touting the great educational system and opportunities we have here in this country. And when you look at STEM careers, that to me is, is where you can start to see where uh, that's a career of the future. And when I was in school, back in the old days, long probably before your parents were even in school, we were moving away from, we were moving away from STEM activities and moving more toward uh, some of your, what we would consider liberal arts activities and training for that, that four-year degree. Well, now we know that there are so many more opportunities that individuals can then pursue a career that may not want to go pursue a four-year degree and make a good career and a good living doing it. And our high schools are adapting to the ever-changing work environment and STEM and, and coding is a big part of that. So the switch to online learning this past year revealed significant learning equity gaps across the nation. What do you believe to be the greatest challenge to educational equity? The greatest challenge right now is getting kids back in school. Mm -hmm. uh, well, all you have to do is look at the statistics uh, and you see in one school district I have, it's in one of my more urban areas. If you look at their freshman class, four in 10 are failing. It's a 40% failure rate. And the average GPA of those four in 10 is 0.99. That is absurdly failing. We've got to get our kids back into the in-class learning experience. And think about this. How many kids do you think that didn't already know about the app challenge were convinced to do the app challenge in a COVID remote learning environment? I'd say a lot less. So we know what the, we, we should be looking at our COVID response within our schools, similarly to what we ask these kids who participate, these students who participate in the app challenge to do. Use data, use science, make sure that we, we run your experiments and cross check those experiments to see what is working and what is not. And we've clearly seen that there is a cost benefit ratio to being in school, in class, in person versus the statistical challenges of the certain age groups that you are all a part of and the sickness level, hospitalization, and any possible death rates. I believe every kid should be back in person, in school, learning this next year because of science and data. Great response. And is there a piece of technology that you can't live without? <laughs> yeah, my hearing aids now. Um, <laughs> old enough to need hearing aids because of the loud music I, I listened to as a young child. Uh, you know, all of us can't live without our handheld. I mean, it's, it's attached to us. Um, I grew up in a time when I was your age where we didn't have cell phones and it was a much different experience. But now we have access to more information at our fingertips than all other generations in the world of history combined. But unfortunately, that same piece of technology that none of us can live without also allows us to choose our news from sites that may be slanted. So you may not get a well-rounded education of what's happening in the world because we have so much access to that information. And it's ironic, your generation has access to that information. And unfortunately, I don't think your generation or my generation takes advantage of the wide net of of info that we have access to and, and uses it accordingly. And my last question for you today, what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? Mm. The latest piece of technology that excites me. It's gotta be, it, it, it's, it's gotta be being able to do Bluetooth and audio TV, uh, a video and audio so that I don't have, I've got the ability to watch TV outside via Bluetooth, via, uh, you know, via streaming services without having to run wires, without having to go inside of attics and walls. I'm 51 years old. That excites me. That hmm. excites me. I'm, uh, I, I, I'm happy about that. I can now take a speaker outside, use my phone. If I want to listen to music while I'm out cooking and on our back patio and, and I'm excited to use the same technology with a TV soon. I may not ever have to come inside. 
Well, Congressman Davis, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. And for our viewers and students, remember the Congressional App Challenge is live so you can register and submit your apps between now and November 1st. Thank you.